Hello, my name's Sienna. Welcome to my house. Come in. Hello, Sienna. This is my dad and this is my sister. Hello. Hi, guys. And this is my kitchen. Today I'm going to be making jollof rice because I love to eat it. Sienna's dad has taught her a special way of making jollof rice that she can do all on her own. Sienna's dad is originally from Nigeria. Nigeria is a country in Africa. There are more people living in Nigeria than in any other African country. In some Nigerian families, children learn to cook from a very young age and help to cook and serve the food to their families. Rice is a very important ingredient in Nigerian cooking and many families eat it at least once a day. Jollof rice is a very popular recipe in Nigeria and each family has their own special way of making it, adding in different vegetables and meats that they like. Sienna has washed her hands, put on her apron and she's ready to cook. I'm making jollof rice for my friends. She's invited Max, Ava and Sophia to taste one of the ingredients before they come round for a very special meal later. What's that? It's a herb. I think it's a type of herb. You're right, it's a herb. Fresh thyme. That's disgusting! Oh dear. It tastes minty. No one's at all sure about the taste of fresh thyme. I don't really like it. Let's find out if Sienna can change their minds because thyme is a very special ingredient in her jollof rice. As well as fresh thyme, you'll need salt, olive oil, basmati rice, tinned plum tomatoes, frozen peas, bay leaves, a sweet red pointed pepper, spring onions, medium curry powder, ground nutmeg, smoked paprika, black pepper, garlic cloves, stock powder, tomato puree and water. First of all, I'm going to put the rice into the water so it's easier to cook. That's right, leave it to soak. Next, I'm going to drain out the tomatoes. No, they look very squishy. You'll need to save that juice for later. We put the tomatoes into the bowl. And then chop them up into really small, small pieces. Yeah, be careful with those scissors. I add the uh, frozen peas into the pot. And now for the sweet pointed pepper. So you twist it. It's got a nice popping sound when you twist it. And then take all the seeds out. Then carefully cut it up. I hope my friends are going to like this jollof rice. As well as spinach, you'll need grated cheese, a carrot, salt, black pepper, roasted red pepper, self-raising flour, vegetable oil and water. I've got a bowl of flour and I'm going to get a pinch of salt and put it in. That's it, make a hole in the middle. Then add vegetable oil. What's next? I'm going to put some water in. And start mixing. I'm trying to make dough. If it gets a little bit sticky, add some more flour. Usually we use our hands in Trinidad. That's why I'm using mine. Add some more water. Make the dough into a ball. My grandma taught my mum how to make this, and then my mum taught me how to make it. I'm just going to wash my hands. Cover the bowl with a clean tea towel and put it to one side. In another bowl, add grated carrot, chopped roasted red pepper and the grated cheese. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? That's right. Spinach. Spinach is a leafy flowering plant and the leaves are the part of the plant that we eat. There are different types of spinach. 
Some have dark green curly leaves. Some have wide smooth leaves. And others have slightly crinkly leaves. Spinach is full of things that are good for you. Some people think it can give you strong bones and muscles. And many years ago, artists used the green colour in spinach leaves to help them make green ink and paint. Carefully chop the spinach and add it to the bowl. What's next? I'm going to put some pepper in. Then mix it, mix it, mix it. What's next, Amelia? I'm going to do my dough. Sprinkle some flour to stop the dough sticking. Split the dough in half. Add some more flour. Then roll one half out with a rolling pin. I first learned to roll a roti in Trinidad. Trinidad is a very hot place and it's always sunny. Now I'm going to cut the roti halfway up. Careful with those scissors. And paint it with vegetable oil. Then take half of your yummy filling and sprinkle it over the rolled dough. We're going to start rolling. I'm rolling it up into a cone. And then I'm pinching this edge and tucking it inside. Because cooked lentils are one of the main ingredients in Yaya's recipe. You'll also need tomato passata, spring onions, black pepper, fresh parsley, ground cloves, garlic, smooth peanut butter, vegetable oil, vegetable stock powder, warm water and dry thyme. First, add a dessert spoon of peanut butter to warm water. Make sure nobody eating this is allergic to nuts. Add vegetable stock and give it a stir. What's next? Add some passata to the jug. And give it another stir. Add dry thyme, ground cloves and a few twists of black pepper. Then you've guessed it. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Now peel and crush your garlic. Just peel off the papery skin. Ask a grown-up to help you if you find this tricky. Guinea-Bissau is in Africa. It's very hot and it's a very nice place because there's lots of animals. I would like to go there one day. Now use a garlic crusher to carefully crush the garlic onto your worktop. Use a spoon to help you scrape any garlic off. Add it to the jug and mix it, mix it, mix it again. It's time to grease my casserole dish. Just brush oil over the dish. In Guinea-Bissau they speak Portuguese and another language called Creole. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. Mmm, and you know what that is, don't you? It's lentils. Lentils grow on a plant that has green leaves and small flowers. The flowers turn into pods, and inside these pods are the lentils, which can be used in cooking. Lentils grow in lots of different colours, including yellow, orange, brown, black and green. Lentils can be used in lots of different recipes, such as soups, salads and stews, just like Yaya's. Now it's time to wash my lentils. Tip the cooked lentils into a sieve and give them a good rinse under cold water. What are you up to now? I need to pour my lentils into the casserole dish. Carefully, Trim the ends of your spring onions and cut them into small pieces. Add them to the lentils. Oh dear, not everyone likes the taste, but let's see if Pippa can change their minds because spring greens are one of the ingredients in her recipe. You'll also need cherry tomatoes, shallots, vegetable stock powder, black pepper, cooked chicken pieces, warm water, ginger puree, tomato puree, mild curry powder, and garlic puree. 
So, what's first, Pippa? First, I'm going to put my stock powder in the warm water. Tip in the stock powder and add some mild curry powder. Squeeze out some tomato puree and add this to the jug too. I'm putting all of these ingredients in to make stock. Now I'm going to put the garlic in. Then do the same with some ginger puree. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Now I'm going to pour in all of this into my casserole pot. Add some cherry tomatoes to the empty jug and carefully cut them up. I've been to Zimbabwe three times when I was a little baby. There's lots of animals. They have elephants, lions, chameleons, and they also have lots of giraffes and crocodiles. Tip the chopped tomatoes into the casserole dish as well. Cutting some shallots. Carefully cut the ends off a shallot. Peel off the papery skin. Then do the same with your other shallot. Then carefully cut the shallots in half. And chop them into pieces. The shallots give a really good flavour to the yama. Add your shallots to the casserole dish. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's spring greens. Spring greens are the leaves of a special young cabbage plant. The leaves are picked before the cabbage is fully grown, when the leaves are still loose on the plant. The leaves are cooked and used as an ingredient in many different recipes. It's thought that they were grown in the vegetable gardens of people who lived in ancient Greece a very, very long time ago. Now I'm going to break my spring greens in little parts. That's it. Tear the spring greens into small pieces. Keep tearing, Pippa. Ever since ancient times, people from all over the world have visited Algeria and have brought with them ingredients and spices that are still used in cooking today. One of the most popular foods in Algeria is borak. Borak are pastries filled with lots of different meats, vegetables and spices. Neymar has washed her hands, put on her apron and she's ready to cook. I'm going to be making Algerian borak for my friends. And she's invited Mina, Ibrahim and Lara to taste one of the ingredients before they come round for a very special Algerian meal later. So this looks interesting. What's that? It looks like a stick. It's just like really hard, like cardboard. Um, it smells like cinnamon. You're right, it is cinnamon. Now you should only taste a small amount for this special taste test. But do you all like cinnamon? Let's hope so, because it's an important ingredient in Neymar's Algerian borek. It kind of tastes like sugar. So I kind of like it and I kind of don't like it. If this was in a meal, I don't think I would eat it. Well, they don't seem to like cinnamon. Do you think Neymar can change their minds? I don't really like it. Let's find out. As well as cinnamon, you'll need an egg, black pepper, spring onions, fresh coriander, olive oil, cheese triangles, cooked minced beef, spring rolled or phyllo pastry, black olives and peeled cooked potato. So first we're going to be taking the cheese and we're going to peel the foil off the cheese and then break it. Next, we're going to be ripping up some olives. Now what? We're going to be smashing up these potatoes. My dad cooked these potatoes earlier so they can be nice and soft. Squishing them in a food bag is a great idea, Neymar. 
tip them into a bowl, trim the ends off spring onions and carefully cut them into small pieces. Now, what's next? Now I'm going to get the minced meat from the fridge. And my dad made this earlier. Add the spring onions to the minced beef. And mix it up. Add the black pepper. Now it's time for this special ingredient. What's that? I think it's lettuce. It's not lettuce. Oh, they're all having a good munch. But is it tasty? It doesn't really taste like anything. It's nice and crunchy. Feels a bit dry and crunchy. I don't like it. I like it. Great stuff, Izzy. It's a voy cabbage. I think it will taste different if it's cooked. I don't really like the taste. Oh, dear. Not everyone likes it. Can Naomi change their minds? Because Savoy cabbage is an important ingredient in her Marfi fish. You'll also need tomato puree, smooth peanut butter, a yellow pepper, mackerel fillets, dry chilli flakes, dried mixed herbs, sweet potato, garlic, long shallots and warm water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four spoons of peanut butter inside this pot of water. Mmm, and give it a stir and make sure no one eating this is allergic to peanuts. Then squeeze tomato puree onto a spoon and add it to the casserole dish. The next thing we're going to do now is the yellow pepper. You've got to press down your thumbs really, really hard and then rip. OK. So these seeds, we don't want to put them in the marfa. Then you've got to break them into little parts like this. That's it. Just tear the pepper up and put the pieces in the pot. Dry chilli flakes next, but make sure you don't get any in your eyes. <laughs> Time for the dried mixed herbs. And Naomi's adding chopped peeled sweet potato that her mum did for her earlier. <laughs> mix it, mix it, mix it. And now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Yes, that's right. It's savoy cabbage. Savoy cabbage is a green vegetable with crinkly leaves that grows from a cabbage plant. As the cabbage plant grows, lots and lots of leaves grow tightly in the middle and this is called the cabbage head. When the cabbage head is big enough, it's picked, washed and ready to eat. Cooked or raw, it's used as an ingredient in many different recipes. Cabbage has been grown for hundreds of years. In ancient China, some people thought that eating cabbage would help men with no hair grow it back again. Ha <laughs> ha! What's that? I think this is a banana. I think it's a banana. Banana. You're all right. It's unripened green banana. It doesn't taste like normal banana. It's not banana sweet. It's a You should only taste a small amount for this special taste test. I don't like it as much as ordinary bananas. Uh-oh. Everyone's not too sure about the taste of unripened banana. Let's see if Talib can change their minds, because it's one of the main ingredients in his banana curry. You'll also need garlic cloves, black pepper, cumin seeds, a green pepper, fresh coriander, long shallots, water, baby tomatoes, black mustard seeds, medium curry powder, ground turmeric, coconut cream, ginger paste and lemon. First, I'm going to take the shallots and cut the hairy bits off. The shallot looks like a squashed onion. Carefully does it, Talib. Then peel off the skin. My mum told me how to cook this meal and I really love it. What's next? Peel the garlic. If you find this tricky, ask a grown-up to help you. Now pop them into a plastic food bag.
and bash them with a rolling pin into small pieces. This is for bashing the bag. Remember, you can wash the bag out afterwards to use it again. Then tip everything into the casserole dish and grind in some black pepper. Now I'm going to get the green peppers and pull the stalk off. Just push and pull apart the pepper and take out the seeds. When they open in the peppers, it sounds a little crunchy. Tear it up into small pieces. Ooh, that's it. I'm going to put all the green peppers into the bowl. I'm going to get the tomatoes and cut them with the scissors. Careful there, Talib. I really love tomatoes. And add them to the dish with black mustard seeds. I'm going to have one pinch of cumin seed. And some medium curry powder, ground turmeric, and ginger paste. What's that? I know it's on a vegetable. It's green, and it's got seeds in it. I think pepper? It's not pepper. What does it taste like? It's really hard. It tastes sour. Uh-oh. I might like it in the food. But Good. I, it's not very nice by itself. Ooh, that tastes disgusting. Oh dear, no one seems to enjoy the taste of raw okra. Can a Kai change their minds when they taste it in his recipe? You'll also need hot paprika, stock powder, tinned chopped tomatoes, baby spinach leaves, cooked roast chicken breasts, tomato puree, warm water, long shallots, ginger paste, black pepper, and garlic cloves. The first thing I am going to do is pour the top tomatoes into the dish. Next, I am going to pour the tomato puree onto the spoon and into the dish. Nicely done, Akai. I'm going to do three spoons of ginger. That's it. Just add the ginger paste to the casserole dish. I'm mixing it now. What's next? Peel off the garlic. Just peel the papery skin off the garlic cloves. If you find this tricky, ask a grown-up to help. Now I've finished the garlic, now I'm going to do the shallots. Carefully cut the ends off the shallots. I'm going to peel it. Yeah, great peeling, look I. Then pop the shallots and garlic into a plastic food bag and bash them into small pieces with a rolling pin. Put your fingers! <laughs> Don't forget, you can always wash your bag out to use it again later. Then tip them into the dish and here we go. Mix it, mix it, mix it. I am going to pull the spinach onto the sauce. Make a layer of spinach leaves on top of everything else. That's right, just like that. It's time for my special ingredient. Man, you know what that is, don't you? Okra. Okra is a green leafy plant with pointy pods. These pods and the seeds inside are the things that we eat. Okra plants like to grow in hot countries around the world, including India, Egypt, Nigeria and Ghana. Music